doing something with cloth and black ink? Paper. Oh, mm -hmm. that's right, yes. Paint. Okay, paper, paper and paint. Yes. Okay, so uh, you know for um, a lot of people who think art is like some esoteric, really deep thing, I think a person like you, when you break down art in your way, the way you shared your stories with me, would be great for the audience. So I want them to know a little bit more of the real Yulia and how she looks at art as a lifestyle and not like work or a career. So um, this is all about that, but we need to get to the basics and start from when you were a little tiny kid and uh, what were the things you remember from that time? What made you get into this artistic form of life? That sounds like a psychiatric session, <laughs> but that's fine. I'll tell you. <laughs> it all started with it trauma. Oh, when it I was four. With trauma. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I always <laughs> enjoyed um, drawing. It just the tools has changed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, at age four, I had a blue pen, mm -hmm. and that was it, I guess, and a pencil, and a four paper mm -hmm. that my mother used to bring from work and use for her mm -hmm. writing or to type. Mm -hmm. um, so I always remember myself drawing mm -hmm. and then it was colored pencils, then it was watercolors. Mm -hmm. and but yes. were you being taught how to draw or you just started on your own? Okay, no, I started on my own, mm -hmm. but at some point when you go to school, they have drawing classes. Uh, drawing classes, mm -hmm. yes. So if you can consider that teaching, then yes, in a sense, I was participate just like everyone else. Mm -hmm. But I was told that I was special mm -hmm. by the teacher, actually, mm -hmm. and I believed him. Oh, Maybe okay. he told it to everyone, but <laughs> I believed him. He thought that I had an amazing sense with colors mm -hmm. and that I have a unique view of how to mix them and mm -hmm. I believed him. Very good. Uh, so many people struggle with bad teachers who misguide them, but I think you had a very special teacher. Yes, who, he was, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, do you remember yourself studying more or making art more? Oh, I remember myself making art, yes. Studying, no. <laughs> I don't think I probably... Mm, I wasn't failure in marks, if mm -hmm. you look at them. Mm -hmm. But inside, you can consider I completely failed on all the subjects because mm -hmm. I, I didn't have interest in any of them. Mm. <laughs> like literally mm. no passion except uh, doing some creative things. Right, so um, a lot of people when they go to school, people who are, kids who are very creative, they look out of the window and they don't listen to the teacher, were you having similar experiences, like you were sitting in one place and you got lost 
<laughs> you went somewhere else. Yes, I think so. I think that was my in generally attitude to life. <laughs> I'm just lost and wandering through space. What is that? Mm. With them, uh, I guess uh, curiosity mm. of a child that mm -hmm. wants to be surprised. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, were your parents supportive of that curious, flying away, floating nature of your life? Yes, until it became a question of making it a career, oh, <laughs> as, as, a, okay. as something that you engage in, mm. yes, mm. Um, but not as a, mm -hmm. a choice. Mm. Mm. Career. Yes, yes, because parents need to see that we uh, look like we can deal with our lives. Yes, I can <laughs> imagine. Um, my parents complain of the same thing, but the thing is that um, your art shaped with your life, I'm sure. And is there any specific uh, major incident in your childhood that happened that pushed you to cross some sort of boundary? Or was it always a free flow of growth in terms of ideas and creative things? Hmm. Well, I guess life is not just centered around your choice of um, hobby mm -hmm. or something that mm -hmm. you love doing mm -hmm. it's many things that happen right so it's uh, lots of things that happen outside of my control mm -hmm. and uh, lots of things that happen because i want them to happen right so um i guess and i forgot what was the question <laughs> the question was any specific incident that m made you push boundaries in terms of your artistic ideas i don't think i ever pushed them mm -hmm. that's the thing mm -hmm. i don't think i I was, I don't even know that they push any boundaries. Mm -hmm. I, I guess I'm somewhere, um, but yes, it's, mm -hmm. it's a good question mm -hmm. whether I felt that I'm pushing. I don't know. Uh, from what I know of you, and I must tell this to everyone, that the Yulia I know doesn't have boundaries. So <laughs> she can't find anyone boundary to push. Uh, uh, and because she doesn't have boundaries and she's always floating, uh, she's not having to push anything, but things just flow. Uh, so the choice of colors you use, I mean, I see you using colors in such a bold, crazy way. Um, and it's never restrained. You never restrain yourself, it seems to me, from my, when I look at it from outside. What makes you so fearless with colors? Is it your fearless attitude in life or is it coming from somewhere else? It's, it's interesting that um, <coughs> when I was studying and including on um, sort of art-related courses, mm -hmm. when I ever short mm -hmm. ones that I've taken, I always was sort of applauded to by the teachers that of my subtlety mm. of colors mm. that I was using very subtle uh -huh. um, because I was using a lot of watercolor uh -huh. and it's not as it bright made, yes you would want to make it bright you'd have to make a special effort mm. but I was using it in a very you would even look at what I used to do and it's quite pale mm. in comparison to mm. what I do now now yeah but um, as I progressed even in watercolors I used to always use a lot of red, red mm -hmm. and yellow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that always stayed the same. So if you look at my paintings and drawings throughout my life, maybe it's just now mm -hmm. you see in a period, or maybe the yes, last ten yes. years. Yeah, because that I'm seeing what you've done now. very bold, bold mm -hmm. colors. Mm -hmm. It wasn't always the case mm -hmm. because I was using different tools and different tools, and I guess also the sensitivity to respond into what's happening in your life is different. Mm -hmm. So we used to use completely different shapes, tools and techniques to, to do mm. things. And they used to be very pale. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is now a question not on art, but more on a, maybe a psychological or emotional level. Uh, you can choose to answer, but the thing is, do you think that from the pale colors to the brighter, more bold approach happened when you were able to um, kind of find yourself in, like you grew out of your shell or something like that? Or some I would say that I am now what I used to be as a child. 
because mm. my first drawings were very bold. Ah. It was always never mixing anything. Right. It just prime colors used as they are next to so, each other. Sorry, so sorry, Manu Then what yes. was your first drawing? Oh, it was actually a house with a um, girl or something. I guess maybe it was me standing next to a home. It's sort of very domestic situation. Right. <laughs> a home and a girl, birds, always birds. Ah. And um, it was very, very colorful. Mm -hmm. So the house was colorful, even though I didn't live in a colorful house. Ah. Mm, the way I draw it was mm, maybe fairy tale like. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you went into pale yes, uh, mode. mode. <laughs> yeah, pale mode. And then you suddenly. So, since when have you gone into this bright, bold mode? Mm, it it's actually maybe for the last ten years. So in two thousand nine, mm. then it makes it mm. something like this. All right. So you studied in school, mm. and were you a were you the kind of girl who would be bullied easily or would you bully others or were you a normal girl who would be able to manage everybody well no i don't think there's anything normal about it <laughs> i guess I, I was both bullied and a bully okay in in a way but only when in the bully in a way that i could if someone attacks me i could attack back in right that sense. so that's not so a that bully can, that's that's no, a person but who's if, strong <laughs> that's true but if you hit harder you instantly <laughs> become a bully even though they attacked first <laughs> okay okay all right so mm, so she's talking about her childhood but from what i see of her it's always been like she's absolutely fearless and she um, she will speak up when she needs to speak up those are my understanding of her but for yes. now i will just keep quiet and listen no, to her because uh, then we can uh, see where we are at um so after school did you so you were schooling in um which city i forgot to ask it you um, to tell us about your place where you were born and where you were being brought up? I was born in the city of Almaty. It's a former capital of Kazakhstan. Mm. It's a beautiful city. Mm -hmm. um, as it translates, the city of apples. Mm -hmm. So, and yes. So you had mm -hmm. mentioned it has, uh, if I'm not wrong, you had mentioned that it was mountains, waters, everything mm -hmm. in one place, right? Yes. Mm. And then you moved from Kazakhstan outside? Yes, I went to study on an exchange program. I won some mm -hmm. competition mm -hmm. to study in States. Mm -hmm. But that was at what age? It was, I think, 15. Okay. After high school. And you were given and the sponsorship for which yeah. subject? Yes, it was. No, it wasn't a subject. It was oh. as an exchange program to leave for one year and oh, okay. study in high school. Oh, wow. That's amazing. So, so you studied in, in high school in the States. And which city was it? It was small city, Waldorf, in the Maryland, state of Maryland. Okay, and then from there you started your college? No. So I returned to Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. And so what happened? T tell us about your uh, tryst with law. <laughs> what, how, how did you get into the legal side of things? I guess I was very bad at math and mm -hmm. I was very good at talking. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so you selected law as a career? <laughs> no, we had uh, family friends who were lawyers and uh, I guess if you're not good with mathematics mm -hmm. and the physics and all the other mm -hmm. sciences that mm -hmm. would help with a particular type of career, correct? The next choice would be law. For some right. reason, it was advertised to me as it should be probably law. Okay. Okay. Uh, so yes. So you studied law, and I studied law. And how much did you study law? So technically, um, what's your? I have a BA in law and uh, masters. And in if I'm not wrong, you were practicing law as well, yes. right? So I, so How I many years was that? Well, okay, I was practicing law since I was um, studying. Ah, so I okay. was sort of working as a paralegal in the oh. law firm, which helped my study. Yes. And then I worked after in the same law firm, mm -hmm. but in a different capacity when I graduated, mm -hmm. yes. Mm. So, so that was like um, a period of 
10 years? 10 years, yes. Oh, wow. And that was all in the States? No, some of it in Kazakhstan and some in the States. Ah, okay. So, while you were a lawyer, yes. <laughs> how much time did you get to do all of this? N not much. I would still do the uh -huh. thing because I cannot stop. Yeah. Uh, it just sort of, if you have a skill, even however small it is, it It'll owns you. Yes. It, it owns you, you will find time. You, yes. you don't have any other way. Yes. It controls you. Mm. So, yes, I had little, maybe um, almost no time, but I mm. would still do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I met you first when we um, had an open day here in this place where mm -hmm. this is our studio, and this we had an open day here, and it happens only once a year? Yes. Two days in the whole year, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I happened to meet her at that time. And um, so I saw you as an established artist who has her own studio, who's selling her own things and people loving her work. But the thing is that you, uh, I, I had no idea that you were also a lawyer and uh, so many things. So when did you actually decide to go 100% in your art and not look back at any of those things? Um, when I always knew that I am an artist since childhood, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. this is something that I never doubted in myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can be not a very good artist, or but you are what you are. So good or bad, you knew you yes. were an artist. Yeah, yeah, there's um, no doubt about it. And in, interestingly, what helped me make a decision is um, my health issues mm -hmm. is the diabetes mm -hmm. type 1 diabetes that I mm -hmm. got whilst I was in states mm -hmm. so because I used to have a lot of comas mm -hmm. with low blood sugar mm -hmm. I thought at some point I might not survive one of those mm -hmm. and it's better to I guess die in the process of pursuing something that you love doing mm, mm. and I didn't want to leave a pile of mm. legal papers mm, if something mm, happens mm. so I just thought it's better to try at least try mm. I wasn't planning for a career change I mm. was planning if I don't leave next month mm. I'd better <laughs> die in the process of okay. at least making steps to okay. something that I love mm. And I wouldn't regret it, mm. even if I was dead. So it's very easy. Right. So, uh, you know the way she says, I had a few comas. <laughs> and it's, it's like matter of fact. And that's that's Yulia for you. Um, we, In fact, um, we've had a discussion in the past about how you um, literally like brought yourself out of, if I can say, the dead. Yes. Um, with your own powers and yeah, it's funny. Uh, yeah, yeah right funny yeah okay but this is the reason why i've been saying that she's fearless in every sort of way it's kind of because i already know her backstory but i want you to tell everyone else um a little bit about um how you literally picked yourself up from all those multiple <clears throat> health issues that probably came at the same time if I'm oh, not wrong, mm, like, mm, or one after another? No, one after another. Yeah. So we yeah. used to have a broken spine, so it's sort of everything. So <laughs> if we do a one, two, three, four in a list, uh, yeah. so maybe one was in diabetes. diabetes yes. Two? <laughs> well, I guess um, my first marriage. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's also, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, yeah. it's a part of life. Part of life, yeah. You can put it in, the, you want to put it in the health <laughs> category? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I will and come to that. Well, and broken spine, broken, broken arm, heart, <laughs> broken everything. <laughs> okay. I have a very interesting life. Yes, uh, that is why you see this kind of uh, interesting uh, work. Uh, yes, all the trauma is here in all, all the colors of the but universe. But you know, I, don't, I see in every painting, this is my take, and you guys can decide when once you see her work, everything that she paints does point to some sort of trauma, but also points more largely towards the, the expansive state of life that she has to conquer all of that trauma. So she had diabetes, you still have it, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, then you had that broken spine. How did you break your spine? <laughs> oh no, I better not 
say. say the story okay but you basically had a broken spine so okay yes. um so you were suggested was, uh, surgery just that surgery yes i was said that i was told that i have six months before I get completely paralyzed and mm-hmm. it's better that I get open my spine and insert a plate or something. Plate, yes. But were they sure that it's... Spine. Right. But were they sure that, uh, okay, if we do the surgery, you will be okay? Or were they giving um, you percentage? Exactly. They say, well, 50-50, you can get completely paralyzed faster by us. Oh, God. But that's not making it easier. Sweet. No. So, and so what did you do? What, what was the decision? And this is why you were practicing my, law my as a career? Uh, no, it was after. Oh, this was so, after. Yes. Okay. Hmm. Mm. So what I did is... Um, hmm, that's a good... What did I do? I went the hardest way possible. I, I guess not the most obvious way. When, mm. when you cannot use half of your body, it's kind of very weak and your arm doesn't bend or move or do anything. And were you in a lot of pain? And yes, some Obviously. sometimes. I, I don't even know why I asked that question, but so yeah. I went to do yoga, Ashtanga yoga. Mm-hmm. I've mm-hmm. never done yoga before, mm-hmm. but I thought, hmm, I have to deal with my mobility in a mm-hmm. drastic way. Mm-hmm. So I, I took Ashtanga yoga classes and mm-hmm. I couldn't do a thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so the first three months, I could barely do anything because mm. you need two hands. Right. <laughs> and your hands were and not I, working, right? And I wasn't doing very well. But with time, I guess after two or three years, I was able to do lots of things, mm-hmm. including, you know, probably some of the movements I cannot do now or fold yourself in a way. Mm-hmm. But I was really able to do everything. Mm-hmm. And this was in that how was many, in class. you said few years? So it, it took me three years. Three years. And so the spine kind of and realigned it on its it own? It itself, yes. And um, in the hospital they told me, well, okay, it happens to 0.0001% usually to sportsmen. Mm. It happens that it heals itself. Mm. So, mm. But I think it can help happen to anyone who mm. Mm. sort of makes the decision Mm-hmm. to try to treat yourself. So what? Yourself. how much importance would you put on that word decision? Like, as you said, so when someone makes a decision to treat themselves. Well, I believe, okay, I can say, I have medics in my family, mm-hmm. very good ones, and I believe that, yes, you can fix lots of problems with drugs. It's a fast mm-hmm. sort of medication. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's a fast way to fix something but I guess as a one body, which is not just the body, but we have, I believe in soul. Mm-hmm. So you have something inside you that you can listen to. Mm-hmm. And um, it's like talking to your own sixth sense. Mm-hmm. You can, I believe, heal just about anything. Mm-hmm. Um, so, well, at least a lot of our ailments can be healed mm-hmm. with um, making effort. It's m- effort in terms of your spiritual body as well. Mm-hmm. So it's not that you have to take care of just physical thing. You mm-hmm. have to take care of who you are, mm-hmm. what's inside you that makes you manifest all these different mm-hmm. physical issues because mm-hmm. they in the ultimately lead you if you question everything it's something that you are mm-hmm. in full control they mm-hmm. wouldn't happen to everyone mm-hmm. they happen to you for a very specific reason mm-hmm. and you allow this reason to happen right. so you have to dig it and uh, sort of find the seed mm-hmm. so until you find it you will have i guess health issues non-stop mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. So you said a lot of very, very deep points there, but if like, uh, if we actually try to uh, take your points into consideration, what I would probably summarize this as is you start off with realizing that you're not just physical body. Then you yes. said about uh, your spiritual soul or whatever name we give it, mm-hmm. that existence, you, you, you acknowledge that existence. Then the third thing you said is about how that itself can be accessed for healing and uh, not just healing physical things 
right um and then finally manifesting whatever that core energy can do and so do you said also in the end that you can heal any any damn thing right like it's not one problem or this or that it, it can be anything my well i i think so mm -hmm. i um, if you put mind to it and the spiritual body yes mm -hmm. whether you might be successful mm -hmm. i don't know but i believe that you can be mm -hmm. and i think coming from a person like you who doesn't just believe but has also kind of practiced that and actualized it in uh, your life where there is no reason for us to not believe her and in the same way there's no reason for us to not believe in the process that she's gone through and she's suggesting for everyone else and uh, everyone has this capacity right uh, it's not like no, you have a special I'm power special. and no, I, I have a special power someone have else and special no. exactly well, so everyone has it yes so um you heal your spine your your coma okay let's talk about you coming out of coma because yes. because of diabetes was yes. it okay and um, they say when you go through coma near death experiences you kind of your life changes and you see things differently yes um from what i know of you you always saw things differently but what <laughs> was what did the coma do to you each time did, did it make you even more Oh, traumatizing! <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it just you you feel your that any moment of your life can be lost. So mm -hmm. you basically you're happier mm -hmm. for that. That mm -hmm. you it could have ended yesterday mm -hmm. but today is another day and I can appreciate it when I wake up in the morning and I say to myself okay no coma happened I'm alive and sometimes when I wake up and it's very quiet mm -hmm. I feel oh I probably maybe I'm already dead ah. <laughs> I start checking I go I open the window and I'm checking that they can hear, hear something. Some yes. 